One weapon that always feels powerful is the flamethrower. There's something about just setting all your enemies on fire and seeing them burn up that is just really satisfying. In this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at how can we implement this into our game. Hey, Chris here from Lom Academy, here to help you live from sunny Florida. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become reality by helping you kill your enemies with fire. As with most things in game development, there's many ways that we can approach this. The one that we're gonna do today with a quick summary for you advanced developers is we're gonna have an attack radius that just triggers when an enemy comes in and leaves and raises an event that the flamethrower class will catch. The flamethrower class will handle actually applying damage to the enemies via an eye damageable and burning the enemies via an eye burtable interface. And the flamethrower class will also manage the particle systems on each enemy. As always, the full project code is available on GitHub, so you can go in there, check it out, play around with it. A couple of notes there is number one, after you check it out, you have to import the Unity Particle Pack. It's a free asset on the asset store that Unity provides that gives us these fire and flame effects that you're gonna see today. And the Scorpion that's included came from Infinity PBR. They have a bunch of high quality 3D models and sound effects. I'm using this one so that way we had something to burn. Link in the description, card on the screen for where you can get this Scorpion model. If you don't have that, what you can do is just replace it with any model like a Pro Builder Cylinder. It doesn't really matter what it is for the scope of this tutorial. I think the easiest way for me to explain how do we do this is let's just jump right into it, open up the Unity Editor and take a look at how did we configure the enemy, the flamethrower, and that attack radius and the particle systems. And then we'll take a look at the code. Over here in the editor, we can see that I have the third person starter assets demo scene. Underneath this robot, in the skeleton armature, I've placed the flamethrower as a child of the right shoulder. This way the flamethrower kind of moves around whenever the player is moving as well. This flamethrower is included in the repository. It's licensed under the CC0 license, so it's easy to redistribute. The flamethrower itself is just a mesh with a flamethrower script attached. We're going to take a look at what that is, but let's take a look at those references on the flamethrower. First is the flamethrower particle system. This is the Unity Particle Pack flamethrower. I've really done very little modifications to it. The second thing is the attack radius, which you'll see is a capsule collider in front of the flamethrower. This is what's going to raise those on trigger enter and on trigger exit events whenever the enemies come in and leave that range. However big you set this up to, you should make the particle system roughly match that. So that way it really sells that these enemies are coming in and getting burned. The shape of this also doesn't have to be a capsule. It can be whatever you want it to be. A capsule just kind of works well for this. You could also make it a cone. Take your pick. I also have attached the flamethrower attack radius to this, and we'll look at why that is in a little bit. A really important piece of this is that this is on a layer called attack radius. In the physics settings, you can see that I've added the new layer and that it only collides with enemies. This is important so that way we don't have random other objects in our scene that are rigid bodies that will raise the enemy entered and leap events. Also in here I have some inverse kinematic targets. You can just ignore those for the time being. It's not really important for what we're talking about today. I'm using these tiny flames which also came from the Unity Particle Pack that will spawn on the enemy whenever we set them on fire. We've also defined the burning DPS and burn duration so that way we can tell that this is going to do 15 damage per second over three seconds and if we keep burning the enemy then and they'll keep getting burned. If we click play, we'll see a bunch of these scorpions spawn and start running around the scene. If I left click, we'll start shooting. And I'll come in here and start setting all these scorpions on fire. We'll see that their health goes down. That's the number above them. And once they run out of life, the flames will go away. They'll play the death animation and then disappear after a short delay. You'll also notice that they will stop burning after some time and the flames will slowly dissipate on them as well. So this is the effect that we're gonna be implementing today. Before we look at any code, let's open up the enemy prefab. That's called Scorpion Enemy Variant. If you open up the GitHub repository, you'll need to first import the Unity Particle Pack, second import the Infinity PBR Scorpion, or update this prefab to have some other model besides this Scorpion. In the Scorpion prefab, we have all the normal stuff that it had, the armature and the mesh, and it also has a Health Text Mesh Pro child that just floats above it. On the root level of this prefab, we have the Blend Shape Manager that comes from Infinity BBR where you 
can play around with the mesh to make like body thicker, claws longer, claws thicker, all the customization options they give you. It also has a rigid body that is kinematic. That's extremely important. If we have it marked as not kinematic, then the physics system is going to try to interact with this rigid body and we really don't want that. We want the nav mesh agent to control where this enemy is going all the time. So we mark it is kinematic. That just tells the physics system, hey, this thing is going to do whatever it's going to do on its own. Related to the physics, it's also important to note that this root level object that has the capsule collider here and the rigid body is on the enemy layer. If we don't have it on the enemy layer, it's not going to collide with the attack radius layer and then we won't get those events raised by the flamethrower. We have enemy movement script that just moves around randomly on the nav mesh. We have the nav mesh agent, so that way we can move around on the nav mesh. Enemy health just defines whether we're burning or not, and how much life we have, and we'll update the text mesh pro text with our current health. And we have an enemy script. It's basically a component registry, so that way we can reference from the enemy things like movement, health, that kind of stuff. We'll open up Visual Studio in just a second to start taking a look at these scripts. Before we get into the next section, I want to talk to you about a new bundle that's available at humblebundle.com that has up to 26 tools for Unity. They've got some really popular, highly rated assets here, such as Unistorm, Berry Animation, Broccoli Tree, and many more. And I actually just mentioned some of my favorite ones in this bundle that I've been watching and I've been looking at for quite a while. Very animation, for example, allows you to do animation within Unity. So you don't need to learn how to use something like Blender because personally, I, I just can't figure it out. Like it's really hard and I don't have the time to come in and learn it. I'm a little ashamed, but what Very animation does is allows you to do that animation within Unity which is super cool. Another pain point that I have is trees specifically. So Broccoli Tree allows you to build trees in the Unity editor, and you can also build them at runtime if you wanna have super dynamic trees. It looks like a really awesome asset with a lot of really great features. I will say I have not personally used any of these. I'm recording this the first day that the bundle has come out, so I haven't had a chance to get my hands on any of them yet. I've been watching some of these on forums, Reddit, just seeing them on YouTube, and a lot of these are really awesome looking assets. First link in the description has got an affiliate link to this bundle. If you head over there, check out all the items, see if that's worth $30 to you, or you can check out one of the smaller bundles as well and see if this is the right bundle for you to help out your game. When we open up Visual Studio, we'll start with the enemy health. In here, you can see that it is a mono behavior that implements the eye damageable and eye burnable interfaces. This is just a little bit of framework, so that way you can extend this if you were implementing your own game. Eye damageable defines the interface that anything that should be able to take damage must implement, which means it should have a health property and it should be able to take damage. Eye burnable is very similar. It defines a public pool is burning and the ability to start and stop burning. So we've implemented both of those here on the enemy health, as well as having things like the health text reference and some coroutine to manage the burning and an event to raise whenever we die. Whenever we take damage, remember that was defined on the I damageable, we will subtract out that damage from our health, we'll set our health text, then we'll check if the health is less than or equal to zero. If it is, we'll set it to be zero, just in case we went below. Invoke the on death event and stop burning immediately. We'll look at stop burning in just one second. Let's first look at starting burning. Whenever we start burning, we set is burning to be true. We check if the burn coroutine is not null. If it is not null, we stop it, and then we start burning with burn coroutine equals start coroutine burn passive and damage per second. The burn coroutine just calculates how frequently we need to calculate damage, which is one over damage per second. Define that as a weight for seconds and calculate how much damage we should take per tick. And then we just call the take damage until the coroutine stops, as long as we're burning. Finally, the stop burning is probably what you expected. We stop burning and then we stop the coroutine of burning. That's really the only piece of the enemy that we need to look at for how to implement the flamethrower because the flamethrower needs to damage and burn something. So let's start looking at the flamethrower, starting with the flamethrower attack radius, which basically, as I said before, just raises events whenever stuff comes in or leaves. So we have two delegate functions, one that is enemy entered event, one is enemy exited event, both that go based on the enemy. And it also is keeping a list of enemies in the radius. And I'm going to tell you why that is in just a second. Whenever an enemy enters, that's on trigger enter, we check other try get component enemy passing out the enemy if that returns true that means they had an enemy so that means we should be able to raise this event we add them to our enemies in radius and then we 
invoke on enemy enter. On trigger exit, we do the inverse, just removing them and then calling the on enemy exit. And the important part why we have to have this list of enemies inside is if you just disable the game object that has a trigger in it, it does not raise the on trigger exit event for every rigid body inside of it automatically. We have to do that. So if you don't do this, for example, whenever you stop attacking, the burn coroutine on all enemies currently inside the attack radius will not have stop burning get called, so it'll just burn indefinitely. So on disable, we just go over each enemy that's currently in the radius and we invoke on enemy exit, invoke that, and then we clear the list at the end. Now let's open up the flamethrower class. This is kind of the main workhorse class. We've already talked about most of these variables. The only two that we haven't really talked about yet is the object pool, on fire pool, and the enemy particle system dictionary. The on fire pool is just so that we have an object pool for whenever we're going to burn the enemies and put that particle system on them. Instead of instantiating and destroying new ones, we're going to use an object pool. We're actually using the built in object pooling support starting in Unity 2021. Link in the description card on the screen if you don't know how that works. I have a video about that. So we create that new pool on awake. And on awake, we also assign the on enemy enter and on enemy exit delegate functions with start damage enemy, stop damaging enemy, respectively. In update, we're capturing whether we're left clicking or not. If we are left clicking, we're gonna start shooting. If we're not, we're gonna stop shooting. That's just enabling and disabling the attack radius and the particle system. Back up towards the top, remember that we assigned start damaging enemy whenever an enemy has entered the attack radius. We get this event. So in there, we'll check if the enemy has the eye burnable interface. If they do, which they should, then we will start burning them. We'll add an on death handler. Probably should add the on death handler first. We then get a new on fire system from the object pool, set it to be inside the parent, and we tell it to loop true. We finally add this particle system that we got from the pool and say that this is attached to this enemy. Why we need that, we'll see whenever the enemy dies, so in handle enemy death, we remove the on death handler. We check if the enemy particle system contains this enemy. If it does, then we will start a coroutine to delay disable the burn, passing in the enemy, that particle system, and the burn duration. And we'll remove this enemy from that enemy particle system's dictionary. Still probably a little bit confusing and weird. So let's look at the delayed disable burn that accepts the enemy, the particle system instance, and the duration. We turn the looping of the particle system off. We wait the duration that they should burn. Then we disable the particle system system and then we tell the enemy to stop burning. We're going to do this exact same thing when we stop damaging an enemy. With that in mind, remember that we get the enemy leaves the attack collider event as soon as the enemy leaves. But fire doesn't stop burning you as soon as like if you're caught on fire and you get out of the bonfire, you're not immediately put out of fire, right? It like burns for a while. We're simulating that here by having this delayed disable burn. So the enemy will still burn for some time after they've left the attack radius and they will still burn for some time after they've died. The flames will slowly dissipate over this duration or until the particle system loop time ends. We'll set the game object to be inactive only after this delay. That way we don't just, as soon as they leave, immediately stop burning. As soon as they die, immediately stop burning and be removed. The last script we're gonna take a look at is the enemy spawner just for completion. On awake, we're gonna calculate a triangulation and then on start, we're going to just instantiate some enemies randomly across the walkable areas. We'll hook up their triangulation to the enemy movement so that way they can move around. And on death, we're going to add the handle enemy death function. I don't wanna to go too much into how the enemies are moving around. I've covered that in AI series part 11 and probably some other times. So you can check out that video if you need to understand how to move an agent around the world randomly. On enemy death, you'll see that we're going to do something very similar to what we just did with the delay destroy of the particle systems, but instead we're going to start a routine saying delay destroy enemy. We'll stop the enemy movement, we'll make the movement not be enabled, and we're going to set the enemy animator trigger death so that we will play their death animation while they're dying. We're going to wait for some time and then we're going to disable the enemy game object and we're going to make sure that they're not moving and they're not going to start moving. That's the only thing that we're doing here. I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people, and that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you want to show your support, you can go to patreon.com slash Academy, get your name up here on the screen, and get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier. At the phenomenal tier level, there's Andrew Bowen, and at the awesome tier, there's Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Paul Berry, and Rulin. Thank you all for your support. I am so grateful. This is just one way that we can implement a flamethrower. There are a bunch of different ways and each comes with its own pros and cons. 
This one was relatively simple to implement and still can get the job done. However, it does have some limitations. For example, if you want the flamethrower to burn the environment around it, this solution doesn't work very well. That's because we're relying on the on-trigger enter and on-trigger exit events that are raised by the physics system when that trigger collides with a rigid body. You can't really put rigid bodies on your entire world like that. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. However, this is quite performant because we do only get those events raised whenever a rigid body enters or exits the collider. How I implemented the flamethrower in Llama Survival is a lot better if you do want to burn the environment because, well, I was shooting bullets instead of using the trigger enter and trigger exit because I already had a bunch of guns that were shooting bullets. It was very easy to extend that to work flamethrower. What that does is allows us to, when the bullet penetrated an enemy and hit a wall or a floor or whatever it's going to do, you have that contact point and then you can turn on some shader effects at that point do some burning of the environmental particle systems, play sound, all that kind of stuff to really sell the effect. Implementing the full bullet system and all of that is a little bit too complicated for a single tutorial. So that's why we kind of went this other way that was really simple and still gives you that burning effect on the enemies without us having to implement a lot of framework code. If you got value out of this video, what you could do to really help me out is share it with a friend, share it on Discord, let somebody else know so that they can also get value as a video. It also would help if you liked and subscribed to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every tutorial Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.